As mortgage rates jumped, buyer demand declined. Not only that, home prices are absolutely down from their peak of just a few months ago. So it begs the question, is this a good time to even consider selling your home? And believe it or not, the answer may be yes, maybe no, depending upon your specific reason. But in this video, I'm going to give you the top six reasons why homeowners choose to sell. And it's not always tied specifically to the economics of the situation. Hi, this is Andrew with the Andrew Smith team here in Frisco, Texas. And this is a topic that came up over this past weekend. We were out with a group of friends having dinner and, and just a general conversation about the housing market came up. And one of the people we were with made a great point. He said, look, he said, there's no way in the world I would consider selling my house right now. He goes, I refinanced. I have a 2.85% fixed 30-year mortgage. Mortgage rates are now in the mid sixes as of me recording this. Why in the world would I want to give up that mortgage rate and move to another house? I'd have to get a mortgage that's substantially more expensive than the one I have. And he brings up a great point, doesn't he? Um, and the answer is, for many people, no, it doesn't make absolutely any sense for you to consider selling your home right now, especially when you consider that home prices have peaked. We're on the downside of the frenzy, right? Right now, we haven't gone into negative territory with regards to year-over-year -year price appreciation. And as a side note, the vast majority of the experts don't think we're going to get there unless something unforeseen happens. Um, which may or may not happen depending upon the economy. But right now, you know, here in Frisco, prices are still up 14% year over year, even though we are down from the peak we saw back in April. So with that in mind, why in the world would anyone consider selling their home right now? And with that in mind, I'm going to run through these top six reasons, but then I'm going to go ahead. And if you stay around till the end, I'm going to go ahead and give you one more reason that somebody may want to consider making the move. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button um, to be notified every single time I post a new video. And if you hit that little bell icon, that's how those notifications will go out. So anyway, here we are, those top six reasons. All right. And this is from realtor.com. They recently surveyed recent home sellers and said, why exactly did you sell, right, in their research? And here are the answers that were given. 31% wanted different features or amenities. And that's still the most common aspect of it. Sometimes there's a specific type of backyard or there's a specific floor plan that someone is after. And let's face it, over the past couple of years, you haven't been able to get it. Right. Housing inventory has been so low. So right now, as those homes come up and become available, if it's the perfect home that someone's always wanted, then usually they'll find a way to make that happen. The second most popular reason was 29 percent of those surveyed said the home no longer meets their needs. So, you know, you could have a situation where the home is too big. Maybe kids went to school or maybe the home is too small. Right. You've got a situation where a baby's on the way you can't tell baby to wait. So you need an extra bedroom or it could be that you have a two story home and it just doesn't work anymore. You need to get on to a single level. So there's a bunch of reasons there with regards to the actual floor plan of the home, why someone may go ahead and want to sell. Third most common reason, 26 percent of those surveys said working from home is definitely becoming permanent from them. So they need a more professional home office or they just need a home office. They can't keep working off the dining room table or off a, you know, a makeshift desk shoved into a corner somewhere. They actually need a dedicated workspace. So they're looking for an actual office within the home. Reason number four. 23% of those that responded said they want to be closer to loved ones, right? So family is always going to take precedent no matter what. And there's a desire, especially when you look through everything that we went through with the pandemic 
and how family time and time together became even more important and the importance of family. And so getting closer to family and being better connected and able to get together more often is a big, big compelling reason for a lot of people. All right, 22%, reason number five, was they want a smaller house that's less work, right? So people's priorities change, they're realigned. People don't wanna be slaves to their homes necessarily all the time. They don't wanna be you know, either cleaning or having to do yard work or maintain this or maintain that. They just, they don't need that much space anymore. So they wanna be able to more spend more time out and about doing other things and not necessarily just around the house. And reason number six, 17% of those surveyed said they wanted to move or they do want to move or they did move, I should say, because they no longer need to be near their office. Right? And that's a big one for a lot of people. Re as I just mentioned, remote work has become permanent. In fact, you know, even the company my wife works for, they recently announced that you know, unless you are actually going to come in a minimum of three days a week, that they're no longer going to provide dedicated office space or dedicated desk space. It's going to be on an as needed basis. The requirement just isn't there. And there's other companies that have done the same thing. I was actually speaking to a friend of mine who is a, a real estate broker on Maui. And he said, you know, when the pandemic hit, and when the pandemic was going, the interesting thing is, he goes, on the island of Maui, traditionally, you can find single family homes for sale, but it can get very difficult to buy a condo. Condos are used for short-term rentals. Airbnbs, a lot of families and people coming in and out for a week, they're great. But when Hawaii put all their restrictions in place due to the pandemic, he said, you could pick up a fantastic deal on a condo because people couldn't rent them. Now, all of a sudden, the taxes, the maintenance fees, the upkeep became too much and people were unloading them as quickly as possible. He said, but on the flip side, you couldn't find a single family home to save your life. And the reason for that was that people didn't have to work in the office anymore. So they had a huge influx of buyers from Silicon Valley and from Japan come in and were buying property on the island as they could now remote work permanently. And that's where they wanted to base themselves. All right, so those are the top six reasons or according to realtor.com. And as I mentioned at the beginning, by sticking around to the end, I'm gonna give you one more. And you know, you go back to the original point that this friend made is, why in the world would I trade my 2.85% 30-year fixed rate mortgage for a mortgage that is, now, now going to be right around 6% or just over. And that is very true. If you look at it just from the perspective of mortgage rate to mortgage rate. But when you look at a family's overall financial position, it might be a little bit different. And here's what I mean. It's recently been reported that credit card debt in this country is at an all-time high. People have spent more and more as wages have gone up. There's been plenty of money around. So it's like, no problem. I'll charge this. I'll pay it later. Right? Look at the price of new cars, new car financing. People have used up a lot of credit. Okay. Now, while mortgage rates aren't directly tied to the moves of the Federal Reserve, so them raising rates doesn't automatically cause mortgage rates to go up, it does make consumer debt go more expensive. Those credit cards do go up, you know, buying cars in the future, those interest rates will go up. All of that is going to get more expensive. In addition, let's look at it. There's a lot of economic uncertainty out there right now. You know, what's going to happen with the job market? What's going to happen overall, you know, as we're heading into what could be, you know, a recession in 2023, if we're not in one already, depending on who you talk to and how it's defined. So even though the mortgage rate has gone up, if you look at it in terms of the overall debt obligation of a given family, and you consider that right now, CoreLogic have recently said that the average American is sitting on $300,000 worth of equity in their home, well, it may change your answer. It may change your position a little bit. What if 
you were able to sell your existing home, clear off all the credit card debt, eliminate that so that payment's no longer there, and then move into another home, even though the mortgage rate might be higher, you may find that your overall debt obligation is not from a family perspective. And you've been able to clear and consolidate a lot of that debt. In addition, at least here in Frisco, Texas, and our surrounding communities, the new home builders are offering incredible incentives and interest rate buy downs. Let's face it, in the last couple of years, it's been impossible virtually to buy a home. You now, with all the bidding wars, with everything that's gone on, that's all gone. Now, all of a sudden, you can actually pick the home that you want, and the builders are offering substantial incentives, as I just mentioned. You know, some of them are offering fixed rate mortgages of 3.99 to 4.99%. Not bad rates and not substantially higher than what you may have already. When you consider in that consolidation of debt and possibly clearing off some of those other obligations, you may actually end up putting yourself in a better overall financial position than if you didn't do something. Now, again, there is no right answer for each and every family, for each and every individual. Right? It's going to be different for absolutely everyone. So if you've got questions, if there's additional information that you want, or you want to speak um, in more detail, kind of kick some ideas around and see what might be right for you. In the description below this video, there's a link to my calendar. You feel free to book an appointment with me. And I'd also be happy to put you in touch with a local mortgage consultant that I work with that will look at your overall financial picture and help you put together a plan that may or may not make sense. There's absolutely no obligation. It's just a matter of finding out what makes the most sense for you. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call, 469-388-0978, or you can send an email to contact at theandrewsmithteam.com.